It's been rainy outside. So we thought we'd show you a little boat tour. Water off a duck's back. The best thing about the boat is this. Huh, the best thing about the boat. But like if we got another boat, I think we'd probably do some things differently. Well, we do have another boat. Yeah, so we're going to do some things differently. <laughs> I'm Jo, and he's Vic. Together, we've been navigating the English canals with our trusty canoe and two narrow boats. One of them is our home, the other we're turning into a travelling coffee shop on the water. Subscribe and come along for the ride. Good morning. I've just woken up and it's quite a sunny day today. Which is nice because the last couple of days it's been raining. But um, fixed to the bed, so I'm going to make some bread. He's just looking at stuff again. Pretty sure now he's just looking at the wall. Oh, God out. Okay, and I'm gonna make some bread. Then I'll stick it in a warm place, which the warmest place here is probably right next to the oven. Ding, there. Um, and leave it to rise for a couple of hours. supposed to spend this morning giving you a grand tour of the boat and we haven't yet. It's been rainy outside so we've basically spent the morning sort of hunkering down, drinking tea, lazing around and not doing much but now at least we can show you the boat. But maybe we should show people the kitchen now. Yeah go on then. Well this is the kitchen as I've seen. So this is the stern of the boat, the engine room, we could probably show you in that in a sec. Um, but yeah, this is the, then you come into the kitchen, which is the opposite way around to traditional narrowboats, is that right? Yeah, this is what's called like reverse layout. Yeah, because basically traditionally, these boats are sort of all based on uh, narrow boats that were like working boats, um, taking cargo up and down the canals. Well, if they're not based on them, it's a, that's what the canals were originally for. So then these boats sort of at least follow in the dimensions of those boats because that's what the, all the locks and stuff like that are designed around. What Vic is trying to explain is that traditional working narrowboats look like this. The entire infrastructure of the canals, the length and the width of the boats, all locks, bridges, tunnels and aqueducts were determined by the optimal load that one horse could pull, which on water was 20 tons. With the boats loaded up with cargo, families would live in a small area at the stern of the boat, traditionally called the boatman's cabin. Tradition is a big thing in this narrow boat game. Yeah, for a lot of people it is. Yeah. Like people love the old engines and having like a boatman's cabin. Like people will just sometimes have a boatman's cabin for the tradition of it. But then that takes up about like, what, 10 foot of space? Yeah. And I just don't want to give that up. I'd rather just have a big sofa. So in the kitchen, we're really lucky to have a washing machine. That's really good. Although we do end up taking our clothes quite a lot to the laundrette just because it's nice to get them dried in the dryers and then bring them back all warm and nice so that we don't have to use up space in the boat to dry them. Um, other things about the kitchen, we've got quite a bit of storage. Food and things, oh, can you see that? Cupboards and bits. And we use this cupboard for food as well. These guys, I would say essential. Vic would say, why did we buy two? And then this is like really the, the big part of the kitchen, the stove. And this does like all our hot water and, oh no, hot water and heating as well. Um, that goes down to the radiators and it's diesel powered. But it's really good. It's really nice. It took a while to like get cooking right on that. Cause it's just got these two hot plates that are sort of a, a set temperature. 
and then a top oven and a bottom warmer oven that we pretty much just use for warming up plates. I could probably prove the bread in there actually. But... Oh, actually, probably the best thing about the kitchen and maybe even the boat, the best thing we have on here is this. Because <laughs> you could never get any, everything in those cupboards and this you just pile, pile the veg high. The best thing about the boat. Well, it's the best thing I think we bought, the best accessory we've got for it yeah. in terms of like space saving stuff. And then this is the lounge, dining room, living bit, in a way. This is where we spend most of our evenings and stuff, especially these days. We've got, uh, this thing's like what's known as a dinette. In fact, I'm not actually sure if it is a dinette. I think a dinette's like one of those cubicle things. But basically, this is the closest thing we've got to like a sofa or anything that we usually sit on. And under here, these cushions made by Joanna's mum. Shout out. As are the curtains. Yeah. Quite That's... impressive. Um, yeah, under here is just useful storage. Um, just loads of stuff. <laughs> frisbees. Yeah, frisbee. It's just probably just coming into frisbee season, but for um, obvious reasons, we haven't, haven't had a go yet this year. But uh, this well, we've got tons of stuff under here. Like under this one is all our kind of winter clothes at the moment. Sometimes we kind of over enthusiastically put all of our winter clothes into storage. Like we did that a few weeks ago and then now obviously it's gone a bit cold again and we've got nothing to wear. <laughs> but like you put them in freezer bags and stuff, we'll show you them one day. Maybe at the, the turn of the next season when we're putting all of our summer clothes away. But like you backpack them up and stuff, it just stops them from getting mouldy. They're really good, those bags. That's a little tip actually. In fact, we'll show you now because it's... Oh, maybe you shouldn't because I undid one to find my waterproof trousers the other day. Right. When the seasons really did turn on us. <laughs> well, I thought it was summer. Alas. I'll show you the bags anyway. Can you see in there? You bag them up and then this is like a little vent. You sort of undo that and then just hoover out all the air. How well did, just stopping things get down. Yeah. I'm gonna have a trouble. We've got to sit on this now to sort of get the climate back down again. Just pretend that I haven't done that, I'll sort that out later. <laughs> and then uh, this is our like replacement TV in the winter. Just that little fireplace. The glass probably needs a bit of a clean at the minute. It's like wood and coal you can burn in there. But we we try and just burn wood because yeah, I think it's better for the environment and stuff. It looks nicer as well. Yeah. But for now, anyway, while it's summer or, you know, spring at least, it's now just functioning as a kind of birthday card and cactus <laughs> stand. <laughs> yeah. I half like cleaned it out, like got all the everything out from the inside, but I just wasn't sure if we were ready to commit to a, a fireless month. Yeah. And fireless. actually today, it's not that one. Like, people have put the fires on again today. Yeah. They smell it in the air, but we're yeah, sort of yeah. trying to resist. Yeah. We're hardy. We're hardy folk on board Narrowboat Zero. And you've seen my dressing gown. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Keeps a lot of warmth in. And then we've got obviously a little freestanding bookcase just there. If um, while we're on the subject, maybe I'll, I'll just point out so, sort of three of my best books. <laughs> John Seymour. Oh yeah. The, com the new complete book of self-sufficiency. I would say for anybody enjoying or planning or wanting to live off grid, that's essential reading. Get your, get your mind around that. He's a good lad, John Seymour. Well, it was a good lad, he's dead now, unfortunately, RIP. But um, also this one, Food for Free. By okay. Richard, Richard Maybe. That's about um, foraging and stuff like that. It's kind of like a guide to foraging. We haven't. We did a little bit of foraging last year, but man, you've got to be quick. Could be quick with the old foraging. And what that book teaches where you've got to be quick and considerate. You know, like don't over forage and stuff like that, which we didn't. We went yeah. Very much under foraged. And <laughs> yeah. be quick at the things that you know are safe. 
Yeah, yeah. But Joanne's don't be hasty in the, <laughs> with those mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's not really much about... Well, there is stuff about mushrooms in there, but, you know... Yeah, when it gets into mushrooms, you're probably going to want to get a dedicated book about mushrooms. That one just shows you some that are like definitely mm. eat once only kind of mushrooms. Yeah. And take care of you. What's oh. your last book? Probably. Oh. <laughs> Stephen Pinker's The Blank Slate. Took me about a year to read it. Look at the sun. You should that say text. that this isn't this isn't based on. Yeah, this is nothing to do in aerobics or living off-grid off -grid living. But it will change your life in other ways. <laughs> He's a good lad, old Pinker. It's right next to Joanna's French version of Roald Dahl's Matilda. <laughs> Which, gladly, I read all the time. It's really earned its, <laughs> all, its place on the boat. <laughs> I bought that really so that I could um, learn French easily. But it turns out even like, like Matilda, no. I thought I'd like recognise things in it. So I'd be like, oh yeah, obviously that word means that, but turns out it's still really hard. <laughs> turns out if a book is in a completely different language, you just don't read it. Yeah, but it will stay there just in case you need to. <laughs> <laughs> just in case a little French kid ever comes around and we need to read them Matilda. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to talk about the radiators? Oh yeah. They're great. We've got two of these radiators. They're like cast iron radiators. They're great just because they hold the heat for ages. Which is part of the reason, obviously, why we've been able not to have the fire on. It's just good. In any, I think, if you're planning on designing your own sort of off-grid living situation or something like that, then I think the only tip that I'm qualified or, or you know, to give you is, uh, is sort of like knowing that some of the systems that you put in are going to fail so you just like if you can have like another alternative just like even at least like one alternative source of heating or something then try and build that in as much as you can another thing that i was going to say is about minimalism and how you've got to be quite sort of minimalistic for living on a narrow boat just because of the space restrictions that you've got which is something like the minimalist, I don't know if it's a movement, but if it is, it's sort of like a movement that you can end up quite enjoying in a way because everything contributes like a lot more. When you've not got much stuff there, you notice things a lot more. And so like, who's the Japanese woman? Maria Kondo. Maria Kondo. Yeah, he says like everything's got to give you joy and stuff. So there are a few features of this boat that I think really give me joy. One of the curtains, shout out to Joanna's mum for stitching them together for us. That was mega. Yeah, that was one of the hardest decisions we made. It, well, it felt really hard at the time. I guess it was like the first joint decision we made about those blooming curtains, like the fabric. You should have seen the stuff that Vic wanted. It was disgusting. It was, well, it wasn't in keeping with the boat. We come through this little corridor here. This is another controversial point, right? if you're designing an aerobike or if you're into that kind of thing at all because in this little cupboard room is our bathroom and uh, it's sectioned off so like you can close this door and then you're left with this corridor but the bathroom is like a separate room completely like the reason why I say it's controversial is because the other theory the, the other sort of design plan is to have like what's known as a walk-through bathroom you can probably guess what that is by the name but it would be uh, you haven't got a corridor but you walk through the bathroom to get from one end to the other and presumably if you're using the bathroom there's two doors that you can close in your, and then you're basically in your own sort of space which... like a Jack and Jill bathroom where it's connected from both sides yeah 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 in like a hotel which uh, sometimes I think like yeah maybe that would have been a better idea because then you can make the bathroom Obviously, you're making it wider, kind of, so that you can make it shorter. But I don't know. We've gone for this way. I think it's all right. It, it means that the corridor is kind of a bit of a waste of space, but some space you've just got to waste. Yeah, I think it's nice that you can see right down through the boat because with a walkthrough one, there's sort of a, the doors are diagonal, aren't they? There's one yeah. on like this side, and there's one over the over there, yeah. like by the other side of the boat. So 
Can't see down the hole. Sense. If down we could show you the bathroom. It's hard to get a good shot of this because it's quite small. This is a full size Schwer cubicle. You know that bath mat dry in there. And this is a great little feature. Ding! Sink area. Bit of storage there for stuff. This is a heated tower rail, which is so nice in the winter. And then the toilet. This toilet is a cassette toilet, which I think is quite, ends up being quite a big decision for people whether to get a cassette or a compost, which I think a compost toilet is, is still a cassette. It just deals with your waste differently. And I think you, you don't have to empty them as, as often. Um, or there's a pump out toilet, which sort of connects the plumbing of it connects into like a tank in your boat. So then you have to get that pumped out somewhere. But we chose the cassette just because we didn't want to be tied to pump outs. But yeah, I think that's the part that people find most uh, disturbing might be a strong word. But I think that's the part, that's the part that makes most people wary of being on the boat. Like if we have guests over, I think that's the bit that poxes them the most is the toilet. Yeah, it's mine, just yeah. My mum won't stay over for that reason. <laughs> She's like terrified of when she might need a wee. Yeah, <laughs> and that ain't nowhere to live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's all right for us. And down here is the bedroom. Got a little bit of storage up here. I keep my hair dryer in there because it's not really anywhere else. And then. That's my little book corner. Probably should have tidied that. And then we've got these little reading lights. They're quite cute because then at night, it's quite nice to just have them on and not the these big, because these big lights aren't that. Ambient. And then I think Vic should come and explain the snug because he's got a lot of explaining to do about that actually. Come on, show them what you've done. <laughs> You can't uh, really appreciate the logic of the snug without seeing the boat in its full glory. Oh, there's a little spider under here too to keep me company. To keep him. We've got a few guest animals at the moment. One is that spider. The other is just above me, Mama Duck. There's a duck that's been laying eggs in our sage plant. So we might have a little pet and some chicks on the bar. You can just see her head there. I don't want to disturb her too much though. I wanted to stay here and have a little baby with you. Uh, but because otherwise we would, we were going to try and show you some more like external shots of the boat and stuff, but we're conscious of disturbing the duck because every time we go out there, she get, she's given us the old side eye. She's like suspicious as hell. So um, we've been basically like trying not to disturb her. She didn't really seem to mind the noise. When she, we were aware, like a few weeks ago, she started laying her eggs and then it's like, it, she lays for a few weeks and then once she's got sort of like a lot of eggs in there, she's got about eight in there at the minute, then she'll sit full time and kind of incubate them. But so when she was sort of like sizing it up as a nest, she was probably sort of like making a bit of a rackets out on the thing. We could hear her. She was like stamping up and down the roof and stuff like that. So I was kind of like making noise back and I'd come out there and stuff like that to sort of like let her know, cool, if you want to nest here, but just know that we're here too. You know, I mean, didn't want to trick her into thinking it was going to be like a... No, it's no, it's no holiday, miss. <laughs> <laughs> so she was cool with it then. And so I don't know how, how she feels about the whole thing now, but... We're just going to leave her to it. But anyway, I'm in the snug. So I should th probably try and get a better shot of what's done. If you put your legs down. Oh, yeah. So this is where our TV is. Yeah. 
like a little cinema room. <laughs> it is actually comfy in here. Yeah, it is nice. It's, the thing is, is that it's become a tiny bit of a storage room as well because we probably don't watch like that many films or we don't watch that much TV. So it sometimes is an unfortunately convenient place just to sling some stuff like, for instance, under this guitar. That, uh, I'm planning on learning any time now. Uh, is some flooring that we got given that we're going to use for part of the cafe boat. Basically, the thing about down here is that it's it's a real nice idea to have a TV down here, but I don't think we use it as much as maybe we would if it was like either actual boat space or like a well deck outside. So we we are trying to use it more just to make. Yeah. Make it earn its place. But sometimes uh, my sister will stay over and she'll stay in this little bit. Yeah, she's And that's quite cute. Here. Yeah. So that's it. This is another. Oh, we should show in our wardrobe. Oh, dear. This is the extent of our closet space. Oh, mine's gone untidy. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> this is Vic's shelf. This is mine. Blech. And then this is where we can hang stuff. But Vic started building this boat before we met. And so I feel like this is a real sign of that. Like who would have a wardrobe a wardrobe pole that short so you can only I feel like he was destined for a single life with that. I can't hang up and that's why none of my stuff is in here because I can't hang up any dresses or anything that's not like a, a shirt so yeah i've been trying to think of a fix for that like maybe putting a little pole out here but i don't think it would look as nice yeah and we should also say about the bed this is a small double bed so what is it four foot by six foot yeah as in it's four foot wide yeah i go on this side and then it's here. It's also quite weirdly high as a bed. Yeah. Because underneath it is the water tank. Yeah. So that none of that is a lot of people have that as storage because they'll have the water tank somewhere else in the like in the body of the boat in the hole somewhere. Um, but ours is underneath here. Yeah, it does mean that when it's full, the boat leans to one side a little bit. Yeah. Like a real snug up in that corner. <laughs> Yeah. And that's it. Do you want to show them the engine room? Yeah. Well. So, Wait. we're back at the the stern of the boat to use the kind of nautical nomenclature. Stern just means the back. Bow is the front. Um, you probably knew that already. But this is so we're at the very back of the boat now. And basically the engine is under here. We can show you it. These are the <laughs> these are the seat covers that I use for the canoe when it's been raining to stop you from getting a wet bump. We just hold bits of cardboard box. But, you know, another little tip if you're a, if you're a wet weather canoe. Under this hatch then is the boat's engine. I mean there's Probably nothing like massively interesting to say about this. Like a lot of the, this room also houses like quite a lot of the back end electrics for the boat. So we've got the boat's inverter, which is, is basically, the, there's usually sort of two electrical systems on, on a narrow boat. You've got your 12 volt, which is what comes from the batteries. Our batteries are down there. Um, and that is usually what powers like your lights. You get 12 volt fridges and things like that, like the one that we've got. But then there are there are some things that you just need 240 volts for, like obviously sort of charging laptops if you've got a laptop and things like that. The washing machine is 240 volts. That's like the kind of electric that you get in your house. My hair dryer and yeah. of course, yeah, this. Pride of the kitchen. The Magi Mix. Never a meal that that doesn't get used for. Absolutely not. Battery monitors. 
So now we're hooked up to electric, there's a battery charger that you can hear like a little whir from over there. That's another one of the boxes that's in this room and it just keeps the batteries charged up. It's quite a luxury. Being in a uh, boatyard marina kind of thing that we're in at the minute is a luxury. The boat turns into like a house and because you, you sort of like stop considering water and electricity as like scarce resources. The second that you are away from this and you're aware that it's going to be like a, another trip to go and top up the water and stuff, you start living completely differently. And we look forward to showing you a bit of that for when we can. That's kind of like the idea behind doing these videos was to show you more stuff like that. But today was a rainy day, so we've not really fancied even going out in the canoe. So we thought we'd do you a little, uh, show you a little boat tour instead. Yeah, hope you enjoyed looking around it. I think it's always like a source of interest. I always just want to be invited onto people's boats to have a nose in. <laughs> but it's just good to see, to get ideas. Like if we got another boat, I think we'd probably do some things differently. Well, we do have another boat. Yeah, so we're going to do some things differently. <laughs> Smells good. The only hard thing now is not to just slice it up immediately and smother it in butter. <laughs> All right, that's it from us. Thanks a lot for watching. Subscribe if you liked it and comment below if there's anything that you want to know or that we've not covered or missed out. Thanks, bye.